But Lord, there are scores of others listed on our list. And you know them all, Father, as we gather on Wednesday night to go over those names. Oh, Father, I pray that people would not only receive uh, this prayer list, but intercede for each and every one listed on it. Lord, forgive our sins. May this new year bring new blessings to all of us. 2020 is not something we could remember. We won't forget that, but I know that we probably would never forget. But Lord, through it all, we thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your strength. We thank you, Lord, that you sustained us. We lost a few of our loved ones, Lord. Uh, I know they're in glory. It's important to know that Jesus is the resurrection and life. Lord, we pray for our country here. We are in turmoil, political turmoil. But Lord, I pray that peace would prevail, that this virus be eradicated completely from the face of the earth. There are people across the globe are suffering from this virus. Lord, all of this is an indication that the Lord is getting ready to come down. But let people get ready to respond to you. There is a God in heaven. No one can hide anything from him. And that God in heaven is going to come down to judge the world. Help us to be ready. Now, Father, I pray that you would take control of my mind, my heart, and help us to worship you in truth and in spirit. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh my Lord. Amen. Yes, through it all, we thank the Lord. Uh, and uh, I was thinking about this. I've been promising that I would sing, I would sing sometime. And I picked this Sunday. When you look at the prayer list, there are so many folks going through valley experience. We forget that God on the mountain is still God in the valley. And when things go wrong, he will make them right. He's the God of good times, also the God of bad times. Don't forget that. So I mustered myself to practice this song and I wanted to, to sing that to you. It's been a while and uh, I do want to sing this beautiful song. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain, but when you're down the valley, it's not, but God is still there. <laughs> is easy when you're up on the mountain you got peace of mind like you never know but things then changes when you're down in the valley don't lose faith for you're never alone For the God on the mountain Is still God in the valley When it's all wrong He'll make them right And the God of the good times Is still God in the bad times God of the day is still God in the night. Talk of faith way up on the mountain. Talk comes so easy. 
life satisfied. Now down in the valleys of trials and temptations, that's where faith is really put to the test. For the God of the mountain is still God in the valley. Things go wrong. He'll make them right. And the God of the good times is still God in the bad times. God of the day is still God in the night. God of the day is still God in the night. Yes, indeed. He is God of the day and God of the night. Placing our confidence in the Lord Jesus in 2021 is the title again. Placing our confidence in Jesus. You know, I stopped writing my New Year resolutions a long time ago. Like you all, I failed to, to follow through. You know, there are times we make a resolution. I want to I lose 20 pounds. Do we follow through? Probably for a month, and after that, we fail. So I don't make resolutions anymore, but this is what I do. I pray that I be faithful to the commitment that I've already made. So I try to, to keep things simple. Needless to say, that 2020 was a dismal year. We had health crisis, political crisis, financial crisis, travel crisis. All these crises limited us from doing what we ought to be doing. Churches are closed. Of course, we have live training. Offices are closed. People are remotely working. We no longer have get together. So 2020 was not something that we would like to remember, but it will go down in history as one of the worst years in the history of mankind. Keeping 2020 in the rear view, I want to look forward to find what God has in store in this new year, 2021. Would 2021 be a perfect year? You know, many folks would say this, I hope for the best, but prepare, prepare for the worst. Hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Now that's sort of pessimistic in my opinion, or maybe over cautious, maybe good in some respect. That is being optimistic, but ready for hard times. It also means keep optimistic outlook and be ready for adversity. I somehow don't really grab a hold of that statement as much as I should because I'm, I'm an optimistic person. A Christian must be optimistic. I'm not a pessimistic guy. So I want to preach to you about the number seven in the Bible. I tried to prepare sermons for, at least put some outlines for the next few Sundays. Why did I pick this number seven? It's not a pessimistic number, it's an optimistic number. And number seven in the Bible is called perfect number. God created the world, rested 
all in seven days. And then we find several sevens. The musical notes are only seven. Seven colors on the rainbow and seven days in a week. And you have many more sevens in the Bible. Here's the Bible verse I want to read that to you. Psalm 12, 6. The word of the Lord are flawless, like silver purified in a crucible, like gold refined seven times. God's word is purified like gold refined seven times. I didn't know that gold is being refined seven times. So what is the significance of seven in the Bible? There are several things that you would have come across in the Bible when you read from the Old Testament and to the end of the, the New Testament, the book of Revelation. Seven is a divine number of completion. It is fullness. It is spiritual perfection, typifying holiness and sanctification. So it is a complete number. If I start to preach on the sevens of the Bible, it would probably take many months for me to cover it all. But I picked a few. Now this Sunday, placing our confidence in Jesus in 2021, how can we do that? The scripture tells Mark chapter 1 verse 34, and he healed many who are sick with various diseases and cast many demons out. So during the earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus, he healed many people, scores of people. Read the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And you will read, many came to the Lord Jesus and God healed them. And John is recording this way, recording this way. Let me read from John chapter 20, verse 30 and 31. John 20, 30 and 31. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. What John is saying here is that Jesus performed many miracles. He did many signs. But John chose to record seven important signs. And what John is saying, these great signs of miracles or wonders given to mankind that you and I put our confidence on Jesus. That people may believe that he is the Son of God. People may, people may know and acknowledge that he is the Messiah. So they could place their entire life upon the Lord Jesus. And John chose seven wonderful signs, so he calls it. So that's the seven I'm going to give it to you. I know it's not a seven-point sermon. I don't want you to be scared that I'm going to keep you until the cow comes home, but I'm not going to. Uh, but just wanted to be mindful that we need to pay attention to all these signs because those signs are important to all of us as we enter into this brand new year, 2021. Having been through a very difficult year, I want you to listen to me carefully. John is categorizing them one after the other for a reason. He said that people may believe and know that Jesus is the Son of God. And I'm preaching it to you that you may know that Jesus has a handle on everything. Place your confidence on Him. The first thing, number one, miracle in Cana of Galilee. You would find in John chapter 2, the very first miracle of the Lord Jesus. The Lord was attending a very simple wedding in a little village called Cana. 
His mother Mary was there, apparently related to the family. That's why she was there, and Jesus was invited along with his disciples. We know the story that the wine ran out. The original translation, it's not called wine, it's called grape juice. <laughs> I don't want to get into the debate, but this is exactly what it says in the original language. It is not the fermented wine that you and I think of. But anyway, they ran out. Mary was calling her son Jesus. Why don't you do something about this? Don't you know that there are guests here and it's an embarrassing time? Perhaps the family was related to Mary. We don't know, but Mary was there. Jesus said, woman, my time has not come. And then we know that the servant set up six stone jars and the Lord asked them to fill that with water. And he instantly changed that into a sweet, beautiful, wonderful drink. Why did the Lord do this? Why John would pick this as the first one? Apparently that could have been the very first one after Jesus was baptized and tempted by uh, the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. And after that, he began to ministry. And this is probably the first one. Here it is. Jesus did that for the following reasons. I believe the first reason being that Jesus wanted to save the family from embarrassment. Because people would blame them. My sister's wedding was in 1985. We ran out of food, believe it or not. I have, I did not taste my sister's wedding meal. Ran out. We expected uh, probably about 200 people, then about 300 showed up. All gone. And people began to, to blame. What happened? Guys, you don't have food. And I know the embarrassment. So the Lord wanted to save this family from embarrassment. The second reason, reason being, by this miracle, Jesus made their wedding reception joyful. Now the master of the ceremony, when he tasted the miraculous wine that Jesus converted from water, he said to the owner of the wedding, why would you keep the best until the last? Which means that everybody is so joyful. And more so, the Lord demonstrated the power. So what do we learn from this particular sign? How can we apply that to our lives in 2021? What I learned is this. The Lord Jesus can make our lives richer fuller and joyful in 2021. All we need to do is invite the Lord Jesus to everything. Invite him when you get together a church at home. Invite him when you have recreation. Invite him when you have a wedding. We invite him when you have a party. When you invite the Lord Jesus, you would leave all the other worldly celebrations out because Jesus is present and he is the only one can fill you with joy. So in 2021, if you want your life to be richer, fuller, and joyful, invite Jesus. Give him the control. All right, that's the first sign. Let me go to the second one. Again, John is calling this being the second sign. And you would find in John chapter 4, like I said, I'm going to preach about 7. Here is a, a healing, healing of a nobleman's son. If you put in chronological order of the Lord's ministry, after the experience in Cana of Galilee, the Lord apparently traveled back down south to Jerusalem. 
it's about 70 plus miles. And then he was traveling back up north to the same place, Cana. This nobleman was living in Capernaum. Now, if you know that area, you would understand what I'm about to say. It, it, it's about 17 miles from Capernaum to Cana. Uh, another 15 to 17 miles to Nazareth, right in between. We drove right through that route from Capernaum to Cana and to Nazareth. It's a beautiful area, even to this date. But this nobleman was living in Capernaum, 17 miles away from Cana. He heard Jesus came back up north. His son was dying of fever. It's interesting. The Bible does not say what kind of fever. Does it mean anyone who has fever would die? We just don't know. It was a fever unto death. Could be a viral infection. I don't know. Jesus demonstrated his power over disease. Now this nobleman comes to the Lord Jesus. And he is begging the Lord, please heal my son. He's in Capernaum. He's in Capernaum. And we are in Cana. The Lord said, go. Your son will be healed. Sometimes I wonder where the Christians lost the perspective of Jesus being our healer. Yes, we do pray. But I want you to know that God has the power over virus. Yes, we're fearful. But don't you ever lose the perspective of Jesus who has the power. I know that you may tell me that God does not want us to be foolish. I understand. I go into the hospitals, fight my way into some hospitals and H1N1 uh, you know, mask and gloves, you name it. By default, they end up in the COVID ICU on the other day. And then went to Howard County Hospital yesterday. And I do go into people's house, like Mr. Chuck Dick. He's laid up in bed. And sometimes I think, Lord, you're the only one protecting. I'm there with the people. We don't know what I'm touching how this virus is being spread. Now, I'm not trying to, to praise myself or anything like that. Here's what I wanted to tell you. You do what you can do within your control. Leave the rest to God. Because God is the ultimate healer. The boy had the fever, and the father's not begging the Lord Jesus. 17 miles away from home. Jesus has the power over distance. He has the power over disease. That's why we're praying. It does not matter where you are. You pray and God hears your prayer. Even miles away. John calls it a sign that Jesus is the Son of God. When you read that you would find this nobleman went to the Lord Jesus with heavy heart. Because the prognosis of his son was that he would die. When this man goes to the Lord Jesus, he was with heavy heart. I have spoken to the people who are related to those that are in the hospital. Their hearts are heavy. I hear their tears. They're crying. Because there are so many unknowns. Our country is facing the unknown. Our hospitals are facing the unknown. Families are facing the unknown. We don't know what is coming down the pike. Well, one thing I do know, I want you to know, that your heavy heart can be replaced by rejoicing if you approach the Lord with confidence. Place. You trust in the Lord completely in 2021. He will remove the heaviness of your heart. And he will put a new song in your heart. 
Jesus can replace heavy hearts with rejoicing hearts. Hang in there. Your heavy hearts will be replaced. Now the third one. John chapter 5. The healing of the lame man. Now Jesus up north in Cana. And then, of course, he comes down to Capernaum after that. If you read uh, the story, then he goes back down to Judea. It's about 80 miles. 80 miles trek. Traveled many times that way. Today we have good roads back in the day. And I'm sure that God had to walk on the rugged roads and camped on the way many times. But anyway, he went straight to Bethesda. The pool. My wife and I were standing up on top of the ruins of the pool of Bethesda. Look down below. The whole thing sunk in. Even now, you would see the colonnades. Of course, the ruined colonnades. It gave us goosebumps to, to know that Jesus walked that way. He went to this pool of Bethesda. He saw a man. Sitting there, he was poor, he was lonely, he was helpless. Here's a man, helpless. The Lord went in search of him. 38 years he's been invalid. He was a lame man. When the Lord went to him and asked him, do you want to be healed? This man said, there's nobody to take me to the water when the pool is stirred up. There's some healing. I can't go. I'm a lame guy. The Lord said, take up your bed and walk. And we know that he walked rejoicingly. God healed him. Now John put that as one of the signs. To believe that God is the Son of God and He has a handle on everything. Now, I used to go to the Baltimore Rescue Mission in the early 90s to preach to homeless. The rescue mission is the place where the homeless would come and rest for the night and they're back out on the street the next day. And there were drug addicts, drunks. They are not supposed to take the drugs or drink anything when they're in the facility and I would go uh, on Thursdays to to preach to them before their dinner remember it was early 90s during the winter time I would smell the aroma of the wonderful soup that they they were preparing for the for the uh, the residents and I thought to myself you know typically I was thinking that these homeless people uh, they're probably dirt poor when I went in there, these guys have electronics that I can't afford to buy. Back in the day, Walkman is one of those. Pagers, one of those. They have it. And I realized it is not the economy. Most of them have been abandoned by their own families, maybe because of their drug, drug addiction or alcoholism. They're put in there. But this one thing stood out to me very, very clear. They were helpless. They were lonely. That's why I went there to preach. I asked the Lord, Lord, let me not be judgmental because they are lonely. They've been abandoned. Economically, they may be okay. If you're poor in our country, it is your fault. They're there by choice. And this lame man, he was not there by choice. He was lame. He was helpless, he was poor, and he was lonely. There wasn't anybody to take him there. Apparently, he didn't, have, he didn't have, even have friends or relatives to take him down there. So when Jesus asked him, do you want to be healed? He said, absolutely, yes, I do. The Lord healed him. You know what he tells me? God cares about your loneliness. God cares about your your economic struggles. God cares about your helplessness. There are those people feeling helpless. I can't help it. 
I lost my loved ones. I lost my income. I lost the love of my spouse. My children left me. My parents left me, abandoned me. There's a sense of loneliness when your own loved ones, whether your spouse or your children or your relatives, abandon you, neglect you, don't pay attention to you. Just like this lame man. When Jesus showed up, he said, Lord, please help me. John said, here's a sign for you in 2021. He can help the helpless, lonely, and the poor. Let's go to number four. Number four is the feeding of the 5,000. John chapter six. I'm just, just going through the gospel of John. When you read that again, it is a beautiful place right above the Sea of Galilee. Lovely greenery. You could, you could, you could see the Sea of Galilee from that vantage point. It is right next to Chorazin. God cursed that city. You remember that? By the way, as a side note, Chorazin is just a monument today. Nobody lives there except critters. The feeling of the 5,000 area is right there, a beautiful plateau land on top of the hill. Now, Jesus had his disciples with him, and 5,000 men alone followed him, the Lord Jesus. They were all listening to the Lord Jesus. They were all hungry. The Lord said, we got to feed them. Philip. Philip is a very practical guy. You know, there are so many folks, very practical. You need to have them on your team also, but don't totally rely on them. Because they would have to kind of line the ducks first. Cross all the T's and all the, all the dots before they take any action. Here it is. Philip said, I'm a practical guy. Even if you have 200 denarius, that's about 200 days wages. In our time, it's about $20,000, even if you put minimum wages. Even if you have that, you can feed these people. We don't have any place to go and buy. We don't have money. And then here, here's another guy, Andrew. See, Andrew, he always sees the inadequacy of the situation. Andrew sees this little boy having five loaves and two fish. And he says, yeah, we got a little bit, it can't go any far. Now there are two guys, one is the practical guy, the other one sees only the small things, the inadequacy of it. And comes to the Lord Jesus. Here we are in the new year. We don't know whether the Lord is going to multiply, meet our needs. Whether he will be adequate for all our needs in this year. We don't know. Some people are like Philip. I'm going to light up everything. I've got this much in the bank. And I've got this much in my safe. And compared to all of that. Yep, yep, I'll be, I'll be okay. Or maybe it's not, it's not good. I need to do more. Well, nothing wrong with that. God said if you're building a tower, better calculate the cost before you build it. Planning is always good. But in spite of the planning, things can go wrong. Let me ask you this. In the beginning of 2020, did anyone envision things would go wrong the way it did? Nobody. Guess you were prepared. So you could be like Philip, well prepared, even if you have something, you know it's not going to be enough. Like Andrew, you would look at the things that you have, said, no, oh, this is too small. Can't do. But you and I know, Jesus can make small things and bless it to fulfill all our physical needs. We have a new budget for our church this year. This is the first Sunday. We have 51 Sundays to go. Not worried? No. But I want to challenge you. Malachi 3.10. Malachi 3.10. 
You might debate whether it's New Testament or Old Testament. I believe both. Here it is. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and thereby put me to test, says the Lord. If you test me, watch it. If you bring it, I will open the windows of heaven and pour down my blessings upon you. God never said when you have a million dollars, then give. The Lord said if you have two, give one. Share what you have. Give it to God as little as it may be. Give it in the hands of God. He will multiply it. All the disciples were put to shame that day when God fed 5,000 men alone, not counting children and women. Apparently they were kids because this little boy had the five loaves and two fish. Give it to God. Let God bless it. Number six. Walking on the water. Walking on the sea. John 6. No, I should say number 5. I'm getting ahead of me. Number 5. And when you read this incident, Jesus walking on the water, you had to, you had to read Matthew and Mark to put all these things together because John is not mentioning too much about this. Luke completely omitted this, but nevertheless, we have a record, clear record, maybe because of Matthew's clear writing and Mark's writing. Luke said, okay, those guys covered it. And he didn't do it. Anyway, we have Matthew, Mark, and John recording it. And I want you to watch this in Matthew. And God sent them. And at the fourth watch of the night, which is between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., when God sent them, it was sunset time, 6 p.m. the previous evening. Now, about nine hours... These disciples have been rowing the boat, straining at the oar, trying to reach the other side. Now, the Sea of Galilee, it's about 13 mil miles long, about 8 miles wide. When we are on our trip, our guide anchored the boat right in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. Looked at me. He said, Pastor Paul, get your Bible, come up here. There were about 30, 40 people in the boat. I want you to preach. Then I kind of thought about this. It was, you know, he didn't give me any warning. He just told me, but thank God. And God gave me this particular incident. He said, folks, look around. This is the place at 3 a.m. in the morning when the entire sea was storming. The storm could come at any time because when you look up north, it's a snow clad mountain, the Golan Heights. Down below is the plains. So the cold air comes down below to the, the Sea of Galilee. The warm air mixes and the storm can brew at any time. They're in the middle of that particular place. Matthew says that the Lord began walking on the water. Mark says that they thought he was a ghost. And the point is this. These guys, have, they were exhausted. They could only go four miles for nine hours. Apparently they were going round and round because of the storm. I want you to know there are things in life go out of control. In times of distress, we are fearful and even lose our faith. Jesus sees today and knows all our fears and our anxieties. Jesus knows our insecurities. Jesus will walk on the very thing that is fearful. I know I'm talking to some. Are you fearful of something? The Lord is going to walk right on top of it. Are you trying to get everything under control? You might not, just like the disciples. When I say you would lose your faith, I'm not talking about the saving faith. This is trusting God faith. The disciples lost it. 
You know what Bible verse come to my mind? Here it is. Isaiah 43, 2. When you pass through the water, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. Jesus can help us in times of need and remove our fears. Number six. The healing of a man born blind. You know, I've been reading uh, in my devotion this phrase. With God, all things are possible. Our responsibility is to tell Him. It might not make sense what God is asking us to do. And God spat on the ground and made a little mud puddle. And He took the mud and applied it on the eyes of this born blind man and be healed. You read the story. And this man was healed. John is calling this to be the sign that we could place our confidence on the Lord Jesus. Why? Even though it does not make sense, keep on trusting God. When I was in the seminary, I used to take my guitar and lead the chapel worship all the time. I remember singing this song. You want to you know that song? Let me read that to you. I just keep trusting the Lord as I walk along. I just keep trusting my Lord. He gives a song. Though the storm clouds darken the sky over the heavenly trail, I just keep trusting the Lord. He will never fail. He's a faithful friend, such a faithful friend. I can count on him to the very end. Beautiful song. Keep on trusting God, even though things don't really pan out to me the way that you want it to be. This man born blind said, I don't care what you do. Let me follow. If I were him, I said, what do, you, what do you mean? You spat on the ground, took the mud and applied it. And go to the pool of saddle and wash. This man could have said, well, you know, I'm a blind man. I go to the saddle many times. That's the only place I take bath. Because I'm not allowed into the town. I'm a blind man. But the Lord said, I want you to go now because I did something different. When you place your trust in the Lord in 2021, don't ask questions. What? How is this going to be? Just give it to Him. Keep on trusting God. Keep trusting the Lord Jesus. He can do the impossible. And finally, I'm going to close with this. The seventh sign. The raising of Lazarus. Martha told the Lord Jesus, did you not hear that my brother was sick unto death and you couldn't come early? If I were in Martha's shoes, with our mindset, I could have told Jesus like this, I fed you many times. I gave you for your ministry. You stayed in our house many times. And you call Lazarus your friend. You call me and my sister as your friend. And I sent word to you. And you were only in, in Judea. It's not that far. We're in Bethany. You could have come immediately. But you didn't. On top of the Lord said, Well, take me to the grave. And Martha said, Four days. The body is stinking. The Lord said, You will see the glory of God. Jesus wept along with them. We know the, the miracle. The Lord stood by the grave and said, Lazarus, come on out. Lazarus walked out of the grave. It tells me Jesus is with our grief and sorrow. He understands. He would wipe all our tears away. Because he has the power over life and death and grave. He said, I am the resurrection of life. So do not be scared about death. Invite Jesus. Jesus can remove the fear of death. Place your confidence in the Lord Jesus in 2021. Jesus, number one, Jesus can make our lives 
richer, fuller, and joyful, just like what he did in Cain of Galilee. Jesus can replace heavy hearts like the noble man and fill your heart with the rejoicing. Jesus can help the helpless, lonely, and the poor like the lame man. He understands when you're helpless. And Jesus can take the small things that you have and bless it. Give it to him. And Jesus can help us in times of need and removes the fear. You may, be, you may be wondering about the storms that you're facing. He would take care of the fear. We walk right on that. And keep trusting the Lord. He can do the impossible. Keep trusting him. Keep trusting the Lord. He will remove the fear of death. So I want to close by asking you to do two things. Keep your confidence in our Lord Jesus in 2021. Keep on trusting the Lord. He's a faithful friend till the end. That includes 2021. Let's bow our heads and pray together. Dear Lord, wonderful seven signs that John is recording. What a joy it is for me to go through that. Remind me, remind all of us at the beginning of this brand new year, 2021. We don't know what holds the future. But when we place our confidence on the Lord Jesus, he would make our life fuller, joyful, do some impossible things, remove the fears, including the fear of death. You are the resurrection of life. Lord, help us not to lose our faith, but place everything on the Lord Jesus. So Lord, I place our church in your hand in 2021. I place my family into your hand in 2021. I'll place my church family into your hands. I place my friends in your hands, Lord. I place our little children in our church in your hands. I place our youth in your hands. I, I place our mission efforts in your hands, including the New Life Baptist Church in India. Uh, Lord, I, I place our international missionaries of Southern Baptist Convention, hundreds and thousands of them into your hands. I place our denomination into your hands. I place this organization I'm a part of, Building Families for Children, into your hands. Lord, I place every effort that I would take and we would take in 2021. We know that God is in absolute control. Wipe our tears away. Lord, take, remove all the fears away, knowing that you have a handle on everything. Help us to keep on trusting you, no matter what. You're a faithful friend till the end. Thank you. We praise your wonderful name. And in that matchless name, I pray this prayer. Amen. I want to thank you for watching. And I hope those seven signs be a part of your life this year, 2021, and forevermore. And we will go through again another seven next Sunday. And I don't know what God would take me to. And you would hear that next Sunday. Until then, may God's presence be with you. And wherever you are, may the Lord bless you. On Wednesday nights, chime in. We'll have a good prayer time and uh, Bible study time. God bless you all, and have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.